Alyssa! Howdy! This is Maria. Huh? Maria? Saw your name on the school alumni line contact list, so decided to drop you a line. Pun. <laughs> hey! Why didn't you come to today's alumni party? We're having a blast! Yeah, I had work today. Sorry. Huh? Work? Too bad. I was looking forward to hearing some cool blue-collar working girl stories. Blue-collar working girl? Yeah, used to call you Alley Cat, who spent four years of high school way in the back of the class, quiet as a kitten, wondered how you turned out. What kind of mundane work were you doing? Well, I suppose the work itself is a bit mundane. I knew it! <laughs> That's why I wanted to hear today. Yeah, I got a rush job in. Right now, I'm on my lunch break. But it's Sunday. Yeah, well, my job doesn't really work that way. So you're in the service industry? No, I work at home, on my computer. What? Are you serious? You're not working at an office? Huh? So, you're still all alone. A lonely alley cat. <laughs> you never change. Never liked that nickname, to be honest. Yeah, well, actually, I contacted you for a reason. What reason? I wanted to tell you that Billy and I got married. Huh? Married? Are you talking about Bill William? The William that was our class president? Are you sure? Who else is there, lol? I thought he wasn't going to that alumni party today. That's what it said on the attendance list. Yeah. Said he had an errand to run or something, so I had to attend alone. But I made the announcement to everyone that was there. And another thing, we got married two years ago. There were various problems at the time, so no big ceremony, just close relatives. Sorry we didn't invite you. Uh, is that right? Hmm, seems like you're at a loss for words. <laughs> Huh? Back in high school, you had a crush on Billy, didn't you? Uh, yeah, well, kinda. I knew it. <laughs> I was always good at reading people. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, I heard you also got married. Uh, that's right. I just heard from someone that your husband's also a former classmate. I kept asking who this guy is, but everyone just seems to change the subject or brush it off. Guess he's the same sort of person. Same blue-collar alley cat type. <laughs> Maybe that's why nobody wants to tell me. Well, compared to Billy who graduated from a top university, he's probably incomparable. Vocational school, maybe? <laughs> So, who did you marry? Huh, listen. Oh no! Not that nerd that was in the other class, Warren! No, Wally, some dorky name like that. <laughs> Actually, it's William. Or as you keep calling him, Billy. Huh? I said, my husband is William. Billy. What? Come off it! Are you serious? Uh, hey, Maria. Didn't I just say that he was my husband and that we got married two years ago? If this is supposed to be some kind of joke, it's not funny. Everyone at the alumni party today, they all know that we're married. Huh? You arrived at the party about 20 minutes late today, right? The MC running the party? Well, he announced our marriage on our behalf, since we couldn't attend. Wait, what are you saying? When you made that announcement, 
about you and William being married and all, wasn't everyone's reaction kinda awkward? Well, everyone was just, you know, sort of envious of us that they were shocked into silence is all. I just got a line message from a friend who's there today. They knew you were lying and, well, you're right. They were so shocked, they couldn't utter a word. What? And also, I heard that you took your kid too. So what? What's wrong with that? I'm allowed to bring my kid, aren't I? I think they told you that if you wanted to bring a kid, you had to inform them in advance so they could prepare suitable dishes. You not only brought your kid without permission, you demanded that you would be let in for free of charge due to your getting married to William. And you had demanded that your kid eats for free. So what? He's our kid. We have a right to eat for free. You better quit while you're ahead. We all know that kid is William's cousin's kid. No use making up stories, Maria. William's cousin was your former boss, who was married at the time. Well, that was... Two years ago. You said the kid, who was three at the time, was William's kid, and complicated things. FYI, William's cousin has been banned by his whole family. Why do you know all this? William was just protecting me. He kept my name out of all of this, so I wouldn't get hurt. But to be on the safe side, he told me everything. Kept me in the loop, if you will. You're making all this up! Oh yeah, and also, you took off somewhere when all the extra marital stuff was going on, but... This whole sordid affair was the talk of the town when you went missing. Y you are kidding me! She really had the gall coming to the alumni party, is how one of them put it. You announced that you married William, Billy, and by the way, he hates being called that, demanding not to pay the attendance fee. Do you know what they call people like you? Shameless. You should keep that word in mind. After that short conversation, I never heard from Maria again. According to a friend who attended the party, Maria was constantly fiddling with her smartphone. She suddenly looked up, red-faced, and screamed out loud. She grabbed her kid, who was stuffing his face with food, pulled him roughly away, and dashed out the door. I asked him if anybody confronted her about the lies, and... He said that Maria was so confident in her acts that nobody got the nerve to tell her. When I told him that I was the one online with her, and he conveyed this to the others, everybody burst into laughter. I hear from neighbors that she's still around and still makes up stories to get what she wants. They all know what she's up to and have become very wary of her. Truth be told, she must have a lonely existence, you know? I kind of feel sorry for her. Hey, can I ask you something? It'll just take a minute. What do you want? I'm working. Sorry. I thought it might be just about time for your lunch break. I don't have the kind of cushy job where I can plan out breaks to the minute. You've never worked, though, so I guess you wouldn't know, huh? I'll be more careful in the future. Anyway, what do you want? Hope it's important. I want to ask about our monthly budget. This again? Again? Didn't we talk about this already? Don't bother me about this through text as well. But last time you left to take a shower in the middle of the conversation. Well, I was tired from working, wasn't I? I didn't want to be bothered by your nattering late at night. So when is a good time to talk about it? You're usually out late drinking on weeknights. And you said you don't want to hear it on weekends because that's your time to relax. So what? You telling me I need to stop going out with clients and come home? Or that I can't relax on the weekends, even though I spend all week busting my butt working? Uh, no, of course I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it seems like there's never a good time to talk about it. You're always going on and on about wanting to talk. As far as I can tell, I've been giving you money month after month. 
And of course I'm grateful for that. So what's the problem? It's difficult to buy groceries for three people and pay utilities every month on a $600 budget. Not to mention things like soap and toilet paper. I'm only just barely managing. You're a housewife, aren't you? Isn't figuring this kind of thing out your job? But there's a limit to what I can do to get by. Limit is a word for people who have been working as hard as humanly possible. Have you been working as hard as humanly possible? I think I'm working as hard as I can. I've been clipping coupons and buying the cheapest groceries I can find. I go to three different grocery stores each time I go shopping. Given that you don't have anything to do all day, that's only natural. When we're really, really cutting it close, I have to skip lunch sometimes. Housewives are pretty idle creatures, so I think missing a bite here and there isn't going to hurt you. <laughs> or skipping an occasional lunch beneath you. Ugh, that's fine. But I couldn't even buy Katie all of the clothes she needs for school. And we had to pay for her summer classes as well. I managed to pay with what I could save by cutting other expenses, but it's just not enough. Sounds like you're telling me that if you stay thrifty, we can manage. I've been as thrifty as possible. There's literally no more corners left to cut. That's enough. You think I'm blind? What do you mean? I can't believe I've been duped all this time by a simple housewife. What are you talking about? I checked this month's electric bill online. It's 15 bucks higher than it was in June. That can't be helped. What do you mean it can't be helped? You can't be as thrifty this month as you were last month? Sounds like you're slipping. Why has it gone up so much? Why? It's been scorching every day this month, so I've had to use the AC. AC? Really? I'm here dripping with sweat, earning all the money for the family. For what? So my jobless wife can just lounge around all day, cool as a cucumber. It's not like I'm using it all the time. But sometimes when I'm doing housework, it just gets unbearable. And only around noon when it's the hottest. And you've got the nerve to tell me that we don't have enough money for expenses, huh? In the end, you're just blowing all the money away on luxuries like AC. I'm not blowing the money. It's been like a furnace here this year. Excuses, excuses. All right, I've got it. Really? Will you think about increasing the monthly budget? What are you, stupid? I mean, I figured out what to do to save on expenses. You're banned from using the AC from now on. What? That's seriously impossible. You don't understand. You haven't even tried it. Don't say it's impossible. We always have the AC on on weekends when you're here. So you really don't understand what it's like during the week. There's no airflow. It's seriously hotter in here than it is outside. You're just weak-willed. Think of this as training, Yolanda. Hang in there for a bit. Hang in there? That's my final word on this matter. That's not fair. I know you've got all day, but if I waste any more time talking with you, I'm going to miss my lunch. It looks like they've ordered pulled pork sandwiches for us today. And the ones they get are leagues better than the sorry excuses you make. I need to ask you a favor. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't bother me while I'm working. I apologize. But please, let me use the AC. Just for today. Excuse me? Did I look at the wrong calendar today? It's already September, isn't it? Yeah, it's September, but it still feels like the middle of summer. I've been holding out as best I can, but I haven't been feeling well ever since this morning. You've been holding out. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. Why was August's electricity bill still almost $9.40 higher than June? Katie was on summer vacation all month. 
And she was working during the day, wasn't she? Sure, she was gone a lot for work, but it's not like she worked every day. Don't try to pass it off on your daughter just because you can't manage expenses. I'm not. I wouldn't want her to have to face the same cruelty from you. Cruelty? Huh, you think I'm tormenting you or something? I didn't say that. Might as well have. I'm just thinking of ways to save money in your place. Since you can't seem to manage to do anything. I'm sorry. Well, if you're willing to admit that, then I guess I can make an exception for you today. Really? But only if you can turn it on without the remote. You took the remote? Where did you put it? I've got it here with me. Why did you take it all the way to your office? I was checking the bills just this morning and noticed they still weren't really going down. So I thought I'd help you out. Are you serious? Anyway, if you really need it, then come here and get it. Of course, we don't need to be blowing any gas money, so make sure you walk. That's like ten miles in the scorching heat. There's no way. Well, then, forget about using the AC today. I'm sure I don't need to say this, but don't even think about leaving the housework and running off somewhere cool for the day. If I have work, then you have work. Oh, I know. Why don't you clean up the shed? That's outside. Any day but today is fine, but that shed is going to take at least three hours to clean. What was that you said before about there being no airflow in the house? Shouldn't it be better outside? I said that, but... I don't have anything going on after work today, so I'll be home right on time to check your work. I better not find you've been slacking off. Do you have work after school today? Nope, I was planning on coming right home. Is something up? No, nothing's wrong. Do you think you could hang out at a friend's or something for the afternoon? I guess so. Why? Just the AC in the house is out is all. Really? In the whole house? I guess our AC is pretty old. Do you think we can get a new one soon? They're expensive, so your father just keeps saying someday. If he stopped going out drinking all the time, we could have the money in no time. Your father has to socialize as well. Whatever that means exactly. You always take it way too easy on him. Well, he earns the money that we all live on. If earning money is so important, why don't you work? Oh, no, I can't. Why not? Did Dad say you couldn't? Well, he said that since I can't even manage everything at the house properly, I'd just be a bother at an office. But didn't you used to want to be an accountant? That's right. Your father and I went to the same university. We were one year apart, though. We were both finance majors studying to be accountants. But I got pregnant with you before I was able to get my qualifications, and your father ended up just taking a normal desk job. So it's because of me that you couldn't become an accountant? No, no, not at all. Having you was the best thing that could have happened to us. Truthfully, I think neither of us had it in us to get the qualification. Ah, so what is it that you see in Dad anyway? Hmm, he used to be very nice. Really? No way. He used to drive by my apartment every day and give me a ride to campus. I can't even imagine that. He's always just sitting around the house, scowling. I think that's just because his work is tough. And so that makes it okay for him to take it out on you? It's just because I rocked the boat a bit. Anyway, I think the AC should be fixed by tomorrow. Are you at home? Yeah. Even though the AC is broken. In this heat. I know, let's both go to a cafe after school. I got paid the other day, so I'll buy. That's your money, Katie. You earned it. You should save it for your future. And to pay for your phone. I know, but I worked a lot during the summer. How about I bring home some ice cream? We can eat some ice cream together at least. That sounds nice. Thank you. 
but I'll be okay without ice cream. Please don't go through the trouble. Oh, but it's no trouble. I actually like my job. And the only reason I started working is because Dad wouldn't pay my phone bill. Your friend's parents all pay for their phones, don't they? Yeah, but I never really expected Dad to. Anyway, it's not your fault, so don't worry about it. How did I get such a good kid? Anyway, I'm really good on ice cream. Just find yourself somewhere cool to pass the time until this evening, please. I've got something important I need to take care of here. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'll let you know when I head home. Hey! After I went through all the trouble of coming home early today, what's the deal? Why aren't you here? You're not answering the phone and all the stuff from the sheds all over the yard. Where are you? Mom's in an ambulance now. What? Mom? Is this Katie? Why is she in an ambulance? Why do you have your mother's phone? It's your fault. You're the one that told her to clean the shed in this heat until she fell over with heat stroke. What? Since an ambulance just for heat stroke? Just for heat stroke? How can you say something like that? An ambulance came to our house, right? Oh, probably bothered the whole neighborhood. How can you think about that right now? If I hadn't come home early and found her, she was in real danger of dehydration. Are you crazy? Making her work on a day like this? She did this on her own. Bull. I saw your conversation history. And what is this about banning her from using the AC? Your mother didn't do the things she was supposed to. It's only natural for there to be some kind of penalty. What's wrong with you? Mom almost died. I didn't tell her to go that far. She just took extra care to do what I asked as her husband. You're asking quite a lot from her, don't you think? How many years have you been treating her like this? I had no idea Mom was working so hard to get by this whole time. Your mother is the one who was wasting the money that I worked so hard to earn. You don't give her enough for her to waste any of it. You don't know what you're talking about, because you're still a child. So don't take that know-it-all tone with me. Even a child could figure that out. Have you ever done any chores? No, right? You probably couldn't even find where the food is in the grocery store. That's enough out of you. You're a little too sassy for someone who relies on me for everything. That's what Mom always says, too. She said that's why she's so passive and has no self-esteem. That's just how she always was. You know, married couples have a way of splitting responsibilities. So why don't you fulfill yours? If you're going to force Mom to stay home, then your job should be to guarantee that you're providing the kind of life that you both want. Guarantee? Give me a break. You're just ungrateful to both of you. I'm on Mom's side. You've kept it hidden that you've been bullying Mom this whole time. And now I realize Mom has been putting up with it as best as she can so that things wouldn't be hard for me. She's been looking so worried and sad this whole time, always watching over me. So now it's time for me to protect her. And just what can a girl your age do to protect her? I won't go to college. I'll keep working part-time and live with Mom. Be realistic. Who do you think is going to hire a little girl with only a high school degree these days? I'll think of something. Do whatever you want, then. I'm sure the both of you will come crawling back, tails between your legs. I just wish I had realized sooner. I could have stopped things before this happened to Mom. You're so stubborn over just a little heat stroke. Whatever, I'm going out. Tell your mother to hurry up and get home. Excuse me? Because of her laziness, there's not even dinner ready for me at home. What do you mean, her laziness? She's in a hospital bed right now. And yet you're going out drinking? What are you even thinking at a time like this? 
After a hard day's work, the least you guys should be doing is providing me with food. You two can get home by yourselves as well. Your mother brought all this on herself. And make sure you tell her I won't be paying any hospital fees or anything. Yolanda, what in the world is going through your head being out at this hour? Despite having no other responsibilities, you can't even manage to be there to greet your husband when he gets home from work. Katie isn't home yet either. I swear, she's gotten rotten. And it's all your fault. Don't worry, Katie is with me. We're at my parents' house. Oh, so the two of you have run away, have you? Get back home before you do anything you'll really regret. And where's the breaker, by the way? The power's out. The electricity and the gas have been shut off. I haven't been paying the bills. What? So where's the money I've been giving you every month been going? You've splurged it all away again. I wouldn't say splurged. I told you there was a limit to how thrifty I could be. I hit the limit, and so I stopped paying them as all. You better get your act together. What are we going to do if the neighbors find out our utilities got shut off? What will the neighbors think? That's all you care about, isn't it? You can care less about what your family thinks. What benefit is there in listening to the chirping of the useless, irresponsible mouths I'm feeding? Irresponsible. I never wanted you to shoulder all of the responsibilities. I wanted to share them with you. If you were capable of shouldering any responsibilities, I would have liked that as well. Or if you could at least have fulfilled your duties as a housewife, that would have been perfect. And what about you? Have you been a perfect husband? How about a perfect father? What have I done to give you cause to be unsatisfied? I'm breaking my back every day at work to put food on the table for the two of you. I'm not talking about money. We don't feel like a family. Just feeling like a family put food on the table? Ugh, I can't see anything in this darkness. I left a flashlight in the dining room. In the dining room? Hey, what's with this paper on the table? Those are divorce papers. Can't you read? Have you thought through what you're doing at all? How do you think the two of you are going to get by, housewife and a high school girl? You think your parents can afford to feed all of you forever on just their social security? You want to go from no AC to not even being able to afford a fan? I wouldn't mind even if we were poorer than that. I'd rather have an empty pocket than an empty heart. Are you saying I have no heart? All right, Yolanda, do whatever you want. But what about Katie? What about her? She said she was going to work straight out of high school and not to college. You really gonna let your selfishness destroy her future? Of course not. I'll take care of her. Don't kid yourself. The two of you together can't do that. I can. I've already found a job. Huh. Congratulations. I can only imagine what kind of place would hire someone who can't even do simple housework. I'll be working at an accounting firm. You're right, liar. How could you possibly get a job with no qualifications? Well, I've been studying hard these past few months and it paid off. I got my CPA certificate. And where'd you get the money for that? Is that where the gas and electricity money went? <laughs> like the money you provided would be enough. I borrowed the money for books for my parents. Katie agreed that I should work as well. From now on, the two of us can live our lives without a shred of support from you. I see. You think I was forcing you to stay home? If you really wanted to work, you should have just said so. That's not what I'm saying. What are you saying, then? I would have been fine even as a housewife. If it at least meant we had a happy home. If you would have just treated us well, I would have been happy. I treated you well. What do you call feeding you? You didn't even come visit me after I almost died of heat stroke. You're still going on about that? How long are you planning on holding that over my head? When I collapsed that day, I finally realized that the Isaac I loved was gone. So I'm cutting ties with you. Katie's my family now. 
And from here on out, the two of us will take care of ourselves. You really mean that? That's why there are divorce papers on the table in front of you. Forget that. If I come meet you now, will that make you happy? Fine, I'm on my way over there right now. Don't bother. Just sign the papers and mail them to me. I'll take care of the rest. I've made up my mind about this. All the love I felt for you is gone. Yolanda! Don't leave me alone in this cold house. It's already December. What am I supposed to do with no heat, no electricity? Maybe spending a night without heating will help to cool your head. Maybe now you'll understand how I felt. Yolanda, please. I don't even know what to do with the power out. Can you at least call the electric company? I can't sleep in this cold. How am I supposed to deal with the darkness? Good thing it's not winter yet, huh? Just put on some extra clothes. You'll be fine. At least you definitely won't get heat stroke. Why, you? Ugh, oh, okay, fine. You win. Just come home. I'll listen to what you have to say. You really are weak-willed, aren't you? What do you mean? Think of it as training, Isaac. Hang in there for a bit. That's what you told me, right? So surely you could do it. Isaac really dragged his feet signing the divorce papers, and his parents made a huge stink about his behavior. They ended up making him sign the papers and dragging him to my house to deliver them, and then they apologized to me. Then they made him promise to pay his alimony, child support, even Katie's college tuition. In order to do all that, he ended up having to move out of the house and back in with them. The guy who did his utmost to pay as little for living expenses as possible suddenly found himself being told he needed to be more thrifty by his own parents. Seems like he's making do with just a fan this summer. Meanwhile, I'm living with Katie in an apartment with proper air conditioning. And while I'm working, I'm studying to get my next level CPA. I've been enjoying my work, and Katie even says that I've been looking brighter. It's becoming our custom for Katie and I to spend mealtimes chatting excitedly. Me about work and her about her love life. From here on out, I'm going to enjoy my life. For my daughter's sake. For my sake as well. I spent so long letting my daughter see me look pathetic. So I want to work hard to become a mother she could depend on.